In this video, we're going to see a fast and easy way to create a login screen for an Android application. We're not going to write it from the ground up, but instead we're going to use Firebase. We will use Kotlin in this video. I have a separate video that does a very similar example, but with Java. Let's start in the Firebase console and select Authentication on the left. Then select Sign in Method on the right side. One quick advantage that you see here is that Firebase Authentication can support several third-party providers like Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Apple, so on and so forth. Probably one of the easiest to set up is email. So we'll focus on that in this video. We will save the others for a future video. I simply choose the Edit and then I choose Enable and Save. Back in my project, our goal is to get this BTN login to bring up a login screen for us. So first thing we're going to do is go to build.gradle, and you might notice that I have some Firestore dependencies that I already have in here. I'm going to add one more, Firebase UI Auth. Search for the version. There might be a newer version by the time you watch this video. While Gradle's syncing, I'm going to go to the fragment, or it could be the activity that's going to handle this button click. I had already used the logon button for a different purpose. I'm going to go ahead and remove that different purpose and make a new logon function. Of course, I haven't written that function yet, so just an alt intern will go ahead and create the function. Inside the function, we want to make a variable for providers that represents the different providers that we are going to use. And this will be an array list because remember, we can do email, Facebook, Microsoft, Apple, several different providers. Right now we're just doing email, but it does expect an array list, so we need to wrap it in an array list. So we'll use a Kotlin function, array list of, then we'll pass into that authui.idpconfig.emailbuilder.build. There's a different builder for each of the uh, authorization types that we can use. So there's one for Google, there's one for uh, Facebook, Microsoft, so on and so forth. Similar syntax to what you see here. Next, we do a simple start activity for result like we've seen before with the camera. So in this, we simply say authui.get instance, uh, create sign in intent builder, dot set available providers. And notice that's plural providers because it is expecting this array list. So we simply pass in that array list that we declared above, providers, and then invoke build. Now this is getting passed to a start activity result, and we know that's what we use when we want to call an external activity, and we're going to hear back from that external activity. We're going to hear back from that external activity in a function called onActivityResult, and we need to know which we're hearing back from, so we have to give this a unique code. Let's, I'm gonna hold here for just a moment, go up towards the top, and I'm going to declare a new constant, private, val auth request code equals 2002. Let's go ahead and grab that constant, just like so. Let's paste it down here as a second argument to our function, and that will complete our function call. The first argument is the auth UI. The second argument is the auth request code. Now, we go down to our on activity result, and we already started building this in a, some previous videos where we were handling the camera and actually saving an image as well. So we have our on activity result. We're checking to see if the result code is okay. And then we're looking at the different request codes that are coming back. Let's simply add one more, else if, and then say request code. And then we can use the constant that we defined earlier, the auth request code. So if we're here, we're hearing back from the authentication. Now we can get our user object and we can simply say Firebase auth .get instance current user. And we can assign that to the to a user variable, which we'll declare up at essentially an attribute level so that it's visible throughout our application. So let's say private var user colon Firebase user question mark so that we can assign it to null because we know we're not actually going to have this until the user logs in. So we'll go ahead and declare it, assign it to null, and then once we hear back from authentication, we will reassign it to whoever the current user is, and then from that we can find some information out about the user. And really, that's all there is to it. Let's go ahead and debug. While it's starting in the debugger, one thing I will point out, make sure that you have an emulator that has Google Play services installed. If not, you'll get an error, something to the effect of make sure to call Firebase app dot initialize app context first. I've set a few breakpoints so we can watch what happens. First, I click the login button and you notice that it's going to hit our login listener. And then it's going to go down and build our auth UI and create our instance. 
I'll press F9 to continue and quickly bring the emulator back over because what you're going to see is very interesting. It's going to pull up a login screen, but it's going to keep the same look and feel as my app. So we've actually gone out to Firebase Auth now, but it looks like we're still in our app. So I'll just put in a dummy email address. Now you do want to use a real email address because part of what Firebase Auth does is it provides you the ability to unlock your account and things like that based on that email address. So there's quite a bit of value add even beyond what you see here. And then I'll do a dummy password as well and save. Now you notice it comes right back to my callback method and now here's the neat part is that as soon as this executes it's going to populate our user object and we're going to have some information about the user including just an identifier that we can use to know who this user is. We can also see who's currently logged into our app by going to authentication in the Firebase console. And here you see that dummy address I put together and that unique user ID, which is just an auto-generated ID. Now let's say we go back to our app and we try to log in one more time. I'll enter the email. You notice we have a slightly different experience now. It's not prompting us for our first name and last name because it realizes I know who this email address is, so I simply need to prompt you for the password that you added earlier. And just as before, we're signed in. And just as before, as soon as I step over this assignment statement, we'll see that the user is populated. And once again, we have a user object that we can work with locally on our application. So in this video, we've seen a fast and easy way to set up user authentication, or in other words, login, by using Firebase as a provider. We know that Firebase can use other third-party providers as well, but another advantage to using email is that Firebase will also handle things like account logout or forgotten passwords or things like that. So if you consider all of the value that it adds, it saves quite a bit of time over making your own login screen and trying to deal with your own authentication. So I hope this video has been helpful, and I look forward to seeing your comments. Thank you.